Hey, welcome back to my lathe. This is a video I wanted to do for a very long time because I get asked about it all the time. So today's topic is drilling with the carriage of the lathe. So this is this is what you see here is basically my standard setup on the lathe. No compound slide, solid tool post, quick change tool holder. And in this case for drilling, I have a keyless chuck in a, a multi-fix boring bar holder. Most, most systems for quick change tool holders will have a way to either directly with a drill chuck like the Aloris tool holders. They have one with a keyed chuck in it. Or in case like uh, the Multifix or the Parat tool holders, you have a boring bar holder with a more staple sleeve and you can put a drill chuck in it. Or if you're extra fancy, you get a CNC drill chuck like this. This is a VDI 30 interface here. This normally goes into the turret of a CNC lathe but this is an accurate 30 millimeter diameter, so it fits into a multi-fix boring bar holder. And these are very nice warm drive drill chucks. Uh, I don't use it very much because of the warm drive. Adjusting the size here is very, very slow, but it holds tools with a death grip and it's very accurate. So, in my case, I have a usually either a six millimeter or a 10 millimeter keyless chuck here in a more taper two sleeve. And that's all I use. My, the main question I get, how do you set the tool on center? And the answer is simple, you indicate it in. <laughs> you indicate it in once, basically. And well, this works only really well if you have a DRO on your lathe. You'd indicate it in once and you set set a tool offset for the drill chuck. Then you just pull up your tool offset, crank it into zero, and then the tool is on center. Uh, takes about five seconds. So uh, we, can, we, can, we can simulate this. <laughs> Okay, I'm here at the lathe. I want to drill something. So first step, we select SDM one, because one in my case is the offset for the drill chuck. Hit enter. Then we crank our cross slide into zero. Drop in our drill chuck and we're ready to drill. For the height adjustment, you use, of course, the height adjust of the multi-fix tool holder uh, when you indicate it at once. That said, you don't really, for general work, you can eyeball it, honestly. <laughs> you, can tur you can just eyeball the center drill. You will see how it deflects. I will show you that and just adjust a little bit and you're good to drill. So that's the basic setup. And then you just use the carriage hand wheel down here, or if you're fancy, you can use the power feet for drilling. So, and why, why, in, why in the name of everything would you do this? That everybody uses the tailstock to drill, or do they? Do CNC lathes use the tailstock to drill? I don't think so. They have tool holders in the turret, so they drill with the carriage, basically. In case you have a DRO on the lathe, you have an accurate C-axis DRO for depth, which is very nice. No indicator or cut up calipers on the tailstock. You can just use the linear scale of the carriage here. Drilling deep holes is way easier than with a tailstock because you have a very rapid motion. Drilling small holes is easier than with the tailstock because you have a very good feedback on the drill pressure on the carriage hand wheel down here. Way better feedback than on the screw feet of a tailstock. You have power feed 
which is nice if you have to do a lot of holes or with larger drills or you're drilling material that's particular prone to grab the drill like brass then you can just power feed it and have a very controlled entry into the material and also you don't have to drag the tailstock in uh, which is bloody annoying because the bigger the lathe the heavier the tailstock gets and to be honest even on this Emco uh, when you're working back here and you need to drag this tailstock in and out again to get clearance for your tool holder in here that's annoying uh, the carriage is made to to deal with all of this without a problem the only case when i use the tailstock for drilling is maybe for very large drills and extremely tough materials but i even run rotor broach drills up to 40 millimeters in stainless steel with the tool post so i'm not exactly worried about that of course it's beneficial to not have a, a compound slide below it because with a solid tool post like this you only have you, ha you have the benefit of the tool post being bolted down and pinned in position not moving and and most importantly being aligned with a compound slide you current you constantly change the angle of your compound slide to cut a chamfer or do threading which doesn't happen here because there is nothing to turn speaking of the compound slide i have one i can put it I, if i need it once every two years i can put it back here on the on the cross slide on the t-slots bolt it down into my taper turning if i really need to but in the last years really literally years this happened maybe two times so i don't see any reason to have a compound slide on my lathe i can do threading without a compound without an issue straight in feed is an absolutely viable feed method for threading if you go back to my drink bottle thread adapter videos the second or third last video i did i did a 70 by three millimeter i think trapezoidal thread in stainless steel and had no issues straight in feeding so not a big fan running a 30 degree in feed for small threads on on manual machines don't see a reason for that a waste of time also it's with dro you don't need the two axes uh, for for your you just go by the numbers meh ramp over um so back, back to drilling so let, let's put this on center with an indicator and then put it on center just by eyeballing so you can see how i do that to center the drill chuck on the axis of the spindle we can use that test indicator in a holder by the way this holder my design well my rip off design uh, i show i I showed this earlier this is a relatively nice design with some tapered seats and these parts here are also tapered so this locks up really nice uh, there is brass washer and the bell wheel washer here to give it a little bit preload when you tighten the screws only a little bit so you can nicely adjust it and then snug it down onto the taper the old download link is probably very broken so i will put a new link down in the description of the video there are a full set of drawings on these i think it's english and german but it's a neat little project and many people have built built it after my plans since then the indicator goes in a chuck or a collet uh, run out doesn't matter because since we're spinning the indicator around the axis of the spindle the run out is, is absolutely no issue here uh, we choke it up as close into itself as possible to keep the overhang to a minimum because this thing will sag due to gravity even with a choked up setup like this it will still sag watch my video our indicator stands made of rubber and you will see what i mean most indicator setups are very very flimsy so then we need a pin in our chuck here then you do your old indicating procedure 
get it close. You, you get it reasonably close just by eyeballing before you get the indicator into contact with, with the pin directly. And then you get closer and closer with, with the indicator towards the pin and the drill chuck. Give it more preload. Okay, I got my side to side. Now I need to change the height. It's a little bit too high. Of course, if you open, then you use the height adjust of the multifix. For the height adjustment, you need to play a little bit around because when you open and close it, uh, when you open it, it will drop down a little bit. And when you tighten the multifix back up, it will rise again. So we start at 12 o'clock at zero and we spin 180 degrees down and we are a little bit off. It's hard to read. Normally I would use a mirror. So if, if you are within 20 to 30 microns, it's perfectly fine. Uh, most drill chucks have a verse run out anyway. Uh, here we are plus 20 and out here we are plus 22. And then we can go to our DRO, hit uh, look for one of the uh, offsets that you want to use. I always use number one for the drill chuck, zero it out. Don't forget to lock the height adjuster. Uh, good idea to use the wrench to tighten it down a little bit, even if some multi-fix vendors tell you that it's a feature that their wrench is not drilled through. Uh, uh, that's, uh, yeah. that, that's indicating in the drill chuck and this will serve for most purposes. If you have a, if you have a coax indicator, if you have one of these things here, you can use that too. Just be aware these tend to sag even more than a normal indicator because they're can they leave it out a little bit more. But we can do that too. Uh, this wonderful instrument is made by uh, Dia Test here in Germany. So let's, you can run these under power. As you can see with the Dia Test, we are very close. And when I move the cross slide, it gets rapidly worse. And we can get it back to to very tight. So that's an option, of course, but I don't, I don't use it very often, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I'm a dial test indicator person. I trust them a little bit more because in these things, there is a lot going on. There are many mechanical link linkages and connections that all add up hysteresis in the instrument. Okay, let's let's play a practical example. Let's say we have this part here and we want to put an M8 thread in it because then I can show you another benefit of using the carriage for drilling. First of all, of course, we start with a spot drill. I said spot drill, not center drill. Center drills are not the right tool for this purpose. You can use either a commercial one or you invent your own three flute spotting drill. Let's start with the spotting drill. I cranked it, of course, already on center. Spotting. Uh, 6.8 millimeter drill, which is the tap, si tap drill size for an M8. I'm using uh, isopropyl alcohol for drilling aluminium. Uh, in this case, because it's very clean lubricant here. Okay, drilling, countersinking would be a good idea. Before you tap, you put in a countersink, of course. Uh, 
And here is the first place where the, the DRO is, is very nice. Using, using the DRO, you can control your chamfer size here very precisely. Um, you touch off with the compass sink in on the edge of the bore by moving in and you zero out your DRO. Now you can create, for example, a very precise one by 45 degree chamfer. Just like this. Then we have our M8 machine tap, which goes in a drill chuck, of course. In case of tapping, we reduce the speed, we gear down the spindle, we use some cutting oil, and normally, now on if you're using the tailstock, you would either use a floating tap holder or you would lose the, the clamp of the tailstock so the tailstock can get dragged along, or you would follow up with the hand crank of, of the tailstock matching the lead of the tap, which is hard to do. <laughs> uh, in case with the carriage here, it's self-feeding and the carriage is, is traveling like loose enough so the tap will pull the carriage in by its own. Isn't that slick? No additional, no, no nothing. It's just a very fast way of doing things. Okay, what about tiny holes, like a 0.5 millimeter drill, a carbide PCB drill, it works just exactly the same. We start by spot drilling. This is the pyramid shaped spotting drill that I showed in an earlier video. Spotting, not a problem. 2000 RPM. And when you watch carefully, you might be able to see the drill bit deflect when we enter the workpiece. That's due to the fact that drill chucks are not perfect. Shocker, those have a runout. You might not think about the runout error in a stationary application like this, where the chuck is stationary and the work will spin, but even even this way around, the chuck will hold the drill slightly off center, depending on the diameter you indicated in and depending on the diameter you're holding on to later on. That means it doesn't matter if you're using a tailstock or the carriage should drill, the drill bit, drill bit is most likely never on center. Even with a very good Albrecht drill chuck, even those have an error. So uh, watch out if what happens here. Hard for me to tell on the tiny viewfinder screen of the of the camera but it didn't look like very much deflection, so we got lucky. And in case of micro drilling, it's a good idea to use the DRO to, to watch the progress of, of the hole depth. And that's what the DRO is very good at. So I'm basically using the DRO to pack 0.1 millimeter increments once I got about one millimeter deep. Then, then I start packing because I don't want the fine chips to, to pack up the, the really small flutes on this drill. 
And this is really a fast way to do micro drilling on a lathe compared to cranking the uh, tear stock in and out. Yeah, I know the sensitive drilling attachment from Albrecht exists and I think they are worthless. They have too much play to be of any good use. And also no, no, no DRO readout on it and meh. The, the, this, this is in my mind the way to go. I drilled hundreds and hundreds of tiny holes with lathe being in this configuration and this works for me of course. It's always, it's always when I show a technique, it's always from my perspective. I'm not, not somebody who, who gets broken hydraulic cylinders or something like that in and needs to repair those. I'm, in my shop, I mostly make small intricate parts. So that's uh, drilling with a very small drill. Then we also have the option of power feeding, of course. I set the lathe to 0.03 millimeters that's 30 microns per revolution of feet. 10 millimeter drill. It's already spot drilled from the last drill that we used. And uh, so this should go fine too, running at about 600 RPM. Also with power feeding, same thing, you can always chip break. You can either disengage the power feed for a second or you can even disengage your power feed and retract to clear out the chips and probably add cutting oil, go back in and re-engage the power feed. So uh, also a very viable thing to do. Only, only good, only positive things about this. Here I want to show you how to, to get the drill on center without indicator, without using the DRO, just by eyeballing. So the part is faced, so the tooling marks already give you a very good indication where the center of the part is. We have a spotting drill in here, so we eyeball it on center. And we just take a stab at it, and you, and you saw the tool deflect in this direction, so we just go a little bit in. There we go. After two correction passes, I got it pretty good on center. When we now change to a drill, like a five millimeter drill here, it's all good. So you can really eyeball it. And you can do the same for the height. Just eyeball, look where the drill deflects, adjust according. When you run very small drills like the PCB drills, you will know that even with the drill chuck indicated in and then you clamp a tiny drill, you will see some deflection in the drill and that's due to the imperfect clamping of the drill chuck and then you have just to adjust by eyeball if you want to have a very good hole. Here we are again with an extreme example. Again, micro drilling, this time without the DRO. This should be good enough centered to do the drilling. By look for for one, using magnification like a 7x loop, you can see a lot. You can gauge very well the drill tip in onto the center of the part just just by looking at it. It's really not complicated. Just try it and you will see that it's easy. And then we take our 0.4 millimeter drill bit. Oh, by the way, I break most drills by handling them, not by drilling with them. So this is 0.4 millimeters, 400 microns in diameter. And most people will say, yeah, you need about half a million of RPM to drill with one of those. And uh, that's just not true.
So when I entered into my, my, my spot drill point here, you saw the drill deflect to the back. So I'm going to crank the cross slide in a little bit like this. I think you could see it move. Now we try again. And this skill to see what's happening is, is really powerful. This helps you in a lot of cases. So um, I would recommend to just try it. And that's how you drill 0.4 millimeter five millimeter deep with the carriage on a fairly large lathe. You don't need a bazillion RPM or uh, some weird fine feed attachments or sensitive drilling attachments or a current micro HD to do that. <laughs> uh, the current micro HD comes into play when you go down factor 10 and drill diameter. Okay, let's do another example with an even smaller drill. We use again the pyramid-shaped spotting drill to put a tiny spot point on the face of the workpiece. Well, it's too big for the drill we're going to use, but this is just an example. And the drill we're using is 0.2 millimeter in diameter, and that's 200 microns. And here we go. Right at the entry, you saw the drill bit vibrate a little bit, and that's I have I have seen that effect very often, but I'm not entirely sure where this comes from. It might be from mismatch of the tip angle, not sure. But as you can see, even with a 0.2 millimeter drill, drilling with the carriage is absolutely a viable option. I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown of techniques regarding drilling with the tailstock, my reasoning behind doing it. First time I saw it really be done on a regular basis was when I started watching Robin. Once again, Robin is the one to blame. <laughs> um, I have seen it before on larger machines with a multi-fix and large more stable drills just to power feed them but never in, in an application with a small keyless drill chuck or you can not only run a keyless, key chuck, a keyless drill chuck in here you could also put in a collet chuck so hope you enjoyed this thank you all for watching and i'll be back